John Piper discusses Romans 15, 1, 7, emphasizing the historical context of verse and chapter divisions in the New Testament. These divisions were added centuries after the Bible's original composition, with the current chapter divisions introduced in 1205 by Stephen Langton and the verse divisions added to the New Testament in 1551 by Robert Stephanus. Piper warns against assuming that these divisions always occur at the most appropriate points in the text. He notes that the chapter break at the start of Romans 15 is not ideally placed as the discussion on the differences between weak and strong Christians continues from chapter 14 into chapter 15. Piper then delves into the message of Romans 15, 1, 2, which accentuates the responsibility of stronger Christians to support and be considerate of their weaker counterparts. The verses state that the strong should bear the failings of the weak and not act solely for their own pleasure. Instead, they should aim to uplift their neighbours. Piper affirms that this message is consistent with earlier verses in Romans 14, which also advocate for understanding and self-restraint in matters of personal freedom, especially when such actions could negatively impact a weaker believer's faith. The overarching theme is the importance of prioritising love, peace and mutual edification over individual freedoms in matters of conscience. Also, Paul asserts the importance of not pleasing ourselves but prioritising the well-being and faith-building of our neighbours. This principle, however, comes with two clarifications. Firstly, the act of pleasing others should be guided by the context. While we should aim to please others in non-essential matters, we must not compromise the Gospel's integrity. Paul, in Galatians 1.10, highlights that he wouldn't alter the gospel to appease others, as a distorted gospel can lead to spiritual harm. The second clarification is that not pleasing ourselves doesn't imply we shouldn't find joy in serving others. While the Christian journey involves self-denial and moments of tribulation, as indicated by Jesus and Paul, it's essential to recognize that there's joy in these sacrifices. Paul reminds believers to serve the Lord with gladness, Psalm 102. Thus, taking pleasure in uplifting others spiritually isn't sinful. In fact, it's problematic if one doesn't find joy in such acts. Paul's teachings in these verses can be summarized as follows. 1. Strive to please others for their spiritual growth, but never at the gospel's expense. 2. Christian hedonism suggests that it's virtuous to find happiness in serving others, even if it means personal sacrifice. God appreciates a joyful giver, whether it's in terms of money, time, or other forms of sacrifice. Paul's ultimate aim with these teachings is to unify believers in glorifying God. He maintains that the collective goal is to glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and encourages believers to welcome each other just as Christ has welcomed them all for God's glory. Moreover, Piper points out that the ultimate aim of Christ and his Apostle Paul is to showcase the glory of God. This glory is not just about the beauty or greatness of God, but the entirety of his multifaceted perfections. Everything from creation to redemption, from church activities to societal interactions, exists to magnify God. Piper cites Romans 11.36 to stress that everything is from him and through him and to him. Piper passionately urges his audience to cultivate an environment where God's glory is the central focus. The measure of success for the church is not in being friendly or unfriendly, but in being completely consumed by the glory of God. This passion for God's glory should be evident in every age group, from children to the elderly, and in every aspect of life, from sports to careers. He laments that much of American culture detracts from this God-centered passion. The culture often promotes superficiality, casualness, and a preference for fun over depth. Piper calls for a collective prayer for a deeper understanding and appreciation of God's magnificence. He references Ephesians 1.17, reiterating the need for a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him. Piper concludes by repeating Paul's message in the text. The goal is to glorify God with a unified voice. The challenge is not about implementing church programs or techniques, but about transforming hearts and minds. The core question is how individuals can come together, despite their differences, to collectively magnify God. Last but not least, Paul provides guidance on how believers can joyfully serve others and glorify God. He offers five key insights. One, 
Christ as the model. Paul underlines the importance of looking to Christ as an example. Christ did not live to please himself, but took on the sins of humanity. By focusing on Christ's sacrificial act on the cross, believers can transform their hearts and actions. 2. Significance of Scriptures Paul underscores the value of the Scriptures in shaping believers into selfless servants. He cites Psalm 69, 9 to emphasize that the Scriptures were written for our instruction. Engaging deeply with the Bible can bring about transformative change. 3. Endurance and encouragement from Scriptures Paul identifies the power of the Scriptures to instill endurance and encouragement. The Bible is designed to provide these qualities, essential for believers to overcome challenges and differences. 4. The power of hope. Paul stresses the necessity of hope for believers to continue on the path of selfless love. Just as Jesus endured the cross because of the joy set before him, believers need hope to persevere in love. This hope is rooted in the promise of eternal life and the good that God has in store. 5. Prayer and dependence on God. Finally, Paul demonstrates through his own example the need for prayer. He acknowledges that human efforts have limits and that divine intervention is essential for true transformation. Believers must rely on God to guide their hearts towards Christ, meditate on His Word, find endurance and be filled with hope. This dependence on God accentuates the importance of prayer in a believer's life. In essence, Paul's teachings in this passage affirm the centrality of Christ, the transformative power of the Scriptures, the sustaining force of hope, and the indispensable role of prayer in a believer's journey. In conclusion, Piper delves into Romans 15, 1, 7, asserting the historical context of chapter and verse divisions in the New Testament. These divisions, added centuries after the Bible's original composition, may not always be at the most appropriate points. Piper highlights that Romans 15 continues the discussion from chapter 14 about the differences between weak and strong Christians. The message in Romans 15, 1, 2 indicates the duty of stronger Christians to support their weaker counterparts, prioritizing love and mutual edification over individual freedoms. Paul's teachings in these verses stress two main points. One, pleasing others should be for their spiritual growth without compromising the gospel's integrity. 2. It's virtuous for Christians to find joy in serving others, even if it involves personal sacrifice. The ultimate goal is to unify believers in glorifying God, maintaining the collective aim to glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Furthermore, Piper points out that everything exists to magnify God's glory, referencing Romans 11.36. He laments that much of American culture detracts from this God-centered passion and calls for a deeper appreciation of God's magnificence. The ultimate challenge for the church is transforming hearts and minds to magnify God collectively. Lastly, Paul provides guidance on serving others and glorifying God. He offers five insights. 1. Christ as the primary model of selflessness. 2. The significance of scriptures in molding believers. 3. The Bible's power to instill endurance and encouragement. 4. The essential role of hope in a believer's journey. 5. The importance of prayer and dependence on God for true transformation. In summary, Paul's teachings reiterate the role of Christ, the Scriptures, hope and prayer in a believer's life.